Paul over at the Diecast Graveyard YouTube channel invited everyone to participate in his second annual Christmas Build-Off Invitational. I decided to participate in it with this casting you see in front of you. It's a Hot Wheels bone shaker that I had stolen the wheels off of for another build. And I had thrown it in the stripper at the time because, you know, I knew I'd get around to it at some point doing something with it. It seemed to be perfect for this build because I came across an old Christmas decoration we had that had a Santa and a bag of presents. There you see it, that I could somehow fit into this bone shaker. I'm putting a link to Paul's channel in the, the description for this video. Be sure and check that out and check out all the other builders that are participating in this uh, build-off invitational. Can't wait to see what everybody does uh, with all of the possible Christmas themed cars. So it took me a little effort to figure out how to get that stupid thing apart <laughs> without destroying it. It had hidden, there was, there was a screw holding it and that was under uh, a portion of the decoration itself. So once I figured out you popped that out, then there was a screw and pull the screw out of it, and then finally everything kind of comes apart. Now you see Santa's kind of waving. It's <laughs> I don't know why, I just really like the look of that. So I go through a process of trying to fit it into this thing. And one, one thing I knew I was going to have to get rid of some of the detail in the back of the bone shaker. To give you an idea, what I'm shooting for here is I want the metal casting. It, this has a metal body uh, plastic base, plastic interior as well. I'm trying to make the metal, the metal bone shaker itself look like Santa's sleigh. I'm trying to make the base and that interior and engine compartment section kind of look like snow. I end up painting them white. So I'll let you watch what I do with this thing.
Now you see the bag doesn't fit perfectly to the back. There's some gaps just between the way it was originally on that decoration and what I'm trying to do with it. So I got out the Bondic resin pin and I used it to fill in those gaps. I used it for two things on this build actually. I didn't use it really as an adhesive. I used it as a filler. And so here I'm filling in the gaps on the bag to complete the missing sections. And then that piece is just gonna fit into the back on that styrene that I used. The other thing I end up using this Bondic pin for, and it worked really well, and that's coming up here in a second, is for fitting things like you see there. In this case, it wasn't for filler, but I had this opening that I wanted to, I basically would put in some resin, cure it, and then pop the piece out. Cure it a little bit more, make sure it was good and situated, and then fit it back in. So I didn't put enough of it to really be an adhesive. I just put enough so that it would cure and make a fitted piece. I hope that makes sense. I, I hope visually you're seeing what I'm choosing words very poorly to describe. I did the same thing with Santa. And you see here, what, what I, <laughs> I want Santa not only to be waving, but I want him holding the steering wheel just to be safe. So <laughs> I got him kind of situated the way I wanted, cut out some of the seeds, filed it down a little bit. And again, I used the Bondic pin to, to basically fit that Santa in there. And this was really even more touch and go with just little bits of resin. I, I use a lot here at first because I'm just filling in the seats and trying to level it out. I didn't want to sand it or file it completely down. So what I did at first was, you know, kind of level out the interior. I knew how far down the Santa had to be into that seated area. So really quickly, I use the resin for that. And then what I start doing is putting little bits of resin down and then putting Santa in there. You see, here's how I want Santa to be. And so I basically molded a seat out of the resin, just little bits at a time, and then popping Santa back out, putting Santa back in, doing another little tiny dab of resin, curing it, popping Santa back out. It ended up working just wonderfully. I'm not sure you could get away with doing that with a lot of things, but at least however this Santa, whatever this weird little kind of plastic he has on him, it worked great for that. I'm sure I could have used the resin to adhere him to it. I chose not to. I just did little tiny bits to make those seats. And after that, it's on to cleaning up the casting for paint. I end up painting the body with Rust-Oleum Red Enamel. And then once that uh, dried, I hit it with Minwax Polyurethane Gloss Clear. I painted the plastic interior and base with Rust-Oleum White Enamel. And I'm putting Semed wheels off of eBay on this. They're white wheels with rubber tires. But I wanted the spokes on those wheels to stand out. And they really wouldn't have if I left that area on the base behind the wheels white, they would have just kind of disappeared. It would have just been shadows. You wouldn't have seen black behind it. So I painted just that area on the base black, the area directly behind each wheel only. 
And you'll see the end result. I was pretty happy with how the spokes really do stand out. And then I put a little detail on the casting using the Army Painter paints. They're very similar to the Citadel paints. Uh, I just decided on this one I'd, I'd bust these out. So I thought, well, yeah, Santa's sleigh, but there's tail lights back there. I don't detail the engine or anything like that. I do hit the exhaust pipes, but uh, I don't really do any other detail to make it look like a vehicle more than Santa's sleigh. But I had to do the tail lights, and so I did the tail lights. I put white down so it would stand out against the red. I didn't want chrome. Uh, so I just hit this with white and then I get out the army painter green. And so this has green tail lights just to be a little different, you know, just, just to have Santa have an interesting sleigh. I also thought about getting rid of uh, the skull on the front of it because I don't know, a skull on the front of Santa's sleigh doesn't quite seem right, but it's a bone shaker. And you know, there's people who love bone shakers, there's people who hate bone shakers, but everybody has a reaction to a bone shaker. So I left the skull, but I chose to make the eyes and the uh, headlights a little different. You know, I did the uh, green for the headlights and then I gave him red eyes. Almost just think of those as like balls on a Christmas tree. Don't, don't think of them as blood red eyes and green headlights. Just, uh, I was having a lot of fun with this. And this, you know, it's like I had it end up with more of a toy aspect than maybe a fancy custom build. If you kind of get what I'm saying. It's a funny little end result. <laughs> and I do want to thank Paul again over at Diecast Graveyard for hosting this again this year. It's a wonderful uh, thing to do. And especially after, after the year I think we've all been through. Anything we can do to celebrate Christmas and, and the joys in life, we need to take advantage of. So there you see what I ended up, well, you kind of see it's kind of off screen. <laughs> you see what I ended up doing with the skull on the front. There you see what I was saying about the wheels. And again, those are those Samed wheels off of eBay. As I recall, they come from Mexico. It, that's where they're made, but they shipped out of Los Angeles, as I recall. So they got here really quickly when I ordered a batch of them. So particularly with the uh, problems we're all encountering with shipping, you know, since I'm in Central California, the Central Coast of California, anything coming from LA gets here really quickly compared to other areas or from outside of the country. So uh, that was something that worked out really well. Hit this with a little super glue just to keep it in place. And now the way this is constructed, I end up kind of putting it together and then adding on those pieces. So there you have the base with the wheels. Right above that, you see the interior that I'm gonna drop in and then the red body above that. Be sure and check out the other builders that are doing this as well as Paul's channel. And See what they did. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So now here's the basic shaker. <laughs> and I did leave the screws red. <laughs> I thought about swapping them out and just putting fresh chrome screws in there. These were red from when I painted it. And then I thought, no. It's a little color. Gives a little Christmassy detail to the bottom. <laughs> it 
If anyone's curious, I did shorten those screwdrivers a little bit. The uh, that was suggested earlier by uh, by one of the viewers quite a while back, actually. To be honest, I finally got around to it. Look, there's Santa. There's the bag of toys. <laughs> bag of toys drops right in there. So I glued that in already, as you can see. And now Santa, I just put them back there just to make sure everything's fitting well. And hit that with a little CA glue. And uh, drop Santa into his fitted seat. And he is holding the steering wheel when he gets in there. You can kind of see it from the uh, straight on shot. Yeah, through the front windshield, you'll be able to see that he actually has his hand on the steering wheel. There you go. Hey, Sam. I did use the Army Painter paints to touch up that bag to the uh, areas that I filled in. So there's where we started. Just, you know, a clean basic casting. One that was sitting around. Here's where we ended up. Santa's sleigh. Bag of toys. Bone shakerized. And there you can see the spokes of the wheel show up better because of that black behind them. It, it's a little off-putting when you see the black, particularly on the front wheels, um, because you can still see behind the wheels because of the construction of the front of the bone shaker. So I had to make a choice on that, and I decided this was the best way to go. I did think about painting the pipes different colors, and started to do that, it looked horrible. So I <laughs> ended up not doing that. Um, I'd like to take this time to wish everybody out there a very Merry Christmas. Thank you all for watching these videos, and all of your kindness and support during the year. And uh, special thanks also to my Patreon members for uh, all of their support as well. It is truly appreciated. And again, everybody have a very Merry Christmas. And I hope 2021 is a fantastic year for you. Catch you in the next one.